Welcome back, everyone. We have Katarina with us right now. I'm really happy to have her in this talk because, like, he she is like really, really uh, an amazing mobile developer. She is also a Google developer expert for Dart and Flutter as well. She is a woman tech maker's lead for Switzerland, so you can see that she is doing a lot of community work. And today she will talk about the sharp corners of blog. She will share her ideas and. Um, observations about implementing block with us. So stage is yours. Thank you very much. Um, hi, everyone. A little bit about me. I'm Katarina, and I'm Flutter developer at Fastic, and I'm also Google developer expert uh, for Flutter and Dart. And um, so in my free uh, time, I also organize events. Uh, because I am co-organizer of uh, Flutter Zurich and uh, Women, Women Tech Makers Switzerland uh, meetup. And uh, so let's go to the presentation. Um, today I'll talk about block site management. I was using, I've used block when I was uh, working on my private project. It's called the Learn Flashcards. Uh, this is an app that helps to learn anything and um, I had this idea uh, like code sharing where I use uh, block state management and um, like for backend and for the front end, I'll use uh, Flutter. And it was before um, Flutter for web was announced and uh, I'd like to use also um, Flutter web uh, using Angular Dart and to share uh, backend and I went with uh, block state management. And I'd like to share my uh, observations and edge cases of implementing it. And uh, this is an agenda of today's talk. We'll have a look what block is and discuss rules of block. Then we'll see um, block in Flutter Hello World app. And uh, after that, uh, we have a look on some edge cases of implementation block in non-trivial app with complex architecture. And um, complex architecture in this context doesn't necessarily mean an enterprise app. It's going to be at least one step further from Hello World app and um, may include persistence, error handling, validations, and a large amount, amount of data. Let's start with the history of block. Block stands for business logic component and was presented by Google as a Dart Con 2018. And it was designed to allow the reuse of the same code, code base independently of the platform, like web application, mobile, or backend. And to implement Block, we need to know such terms as stream controller, stream sync, and uh, stream builder. Stream is a continuous flow of data. And uh, stream has a single direction. You can only read from stream and you cannot write to it. And sync takes an input and you can only write to sync. You cannot read from it. And streams and syncs come in pair. When we write to sync, it creates, it creates an event in stream. And to create a sync stream pair, we can use stream controller class. To create a sync, we can call a property sync in stream controller. And to get a stream, we can call a property stream. And uh, stream and syncs are also typed. Here's a diagram how a pair looks like. When we create a pair using stream controller, we get a sync to write to one side of the pipe and a stream to read from. And there is also an additional pipe for errors. On the UI, we use Stream Builder uh, to get updates. Uh, stream Builder has stream parameter, and the UI is rebuilt when a new a new value of snapshot arrives. And uh, the, the snapshot is the latest state of the stream. And um, basically, we had a look on the old terms uh, we need to implement block. And um, now let's have a look directly on the uh, block imp implementation and how to put all these terms together. Block is the view model in MVVM application. MVVM is software architecture pattern and it st stands for model view view model. 
uh, model saves data to storage and uh, contains some storage-specific API calls. View is a UI, Flutter, or when I was starting my app, it was uh, Angular Dart. And view model is a block. And block has some strict rules. Block is a class. And uh, the only interface it has is syncs, inputs, and streams, UI modifiers, or commands. This means no fields, no setters, and no methods. Dependencies must be injectable and platform agnostic. No branching is allowed in block. You cannot write, if the platform is Android, do this. If web, do that. It won't work like that. And data flows uh, from the UI to block, from block to the UI, UI using simple streams and syncs. And simple means that you cannot use platform dependent constructions. There are some rules for the UI as well. Each complex enough component has a corresponding block. Components should send input as is. If we have a text field widget, where user types some data, we send it as it is. We don't change it because it's already a business logic. And um, if we get data from block, it should be as close as possible to the output we are aiming to show. All modification should happen in business logic. And to have the whole picture, let's see how block can be implemented in a standard Flutter counter app. A counter app has an incremental increment button and a text that displays how many times we press this increment button. We have a class add block that has sync on add uh, an input for the um, increment button and a stream do set result and output for the counter text. And in constructor, we are listening for the input event when user presses increment button. And when it happens, we increment counter uh, value and um, put it in do set result stream. On the UI, we have floating action button, our input that fires the increment by putting an event to on at sync. And uh, we use stream builder widget to listen to do set result. For this, we assign do set result stream to stream to stream builder, and every time a new snapshot arrives, the text widget is rebuilt and new count value is showed. Now uh, let's implement a block in non-trivial app. I've decided to take a dictionary app as an example. And uh, let's have two screens. First screen is a list of vocabulary. And uh, the second, add update screen. For readability in my example, I've used the following naming schemes for syncs and streams. If the event is coming from block to, uh, from view to block, such as uh, user input event, the sync has on prefix, for example, on back pressed. And uh, when the block is making a change to a view, the stream has do prefix, such as do pop or do show validation result. And I like starting my development from the end result. And let's start with the view. The first question is uh, how to initialize your view view model with block view does not populate any of its fields, no setters, no getters. And block has to send initial data to view over a sync stream. And view has to read it from stream. You can create a stream for every field to set them separately, or you can create a composite object with all view fields to set them all at once. But the composite object has some cons. It's needed to be composed in block, sometimes from multiple models, and needs to be uh, decomposed in view. 
imagine a situation when the first data was changed um, by user and the second not, but the second data widget will still be rebuilt because of a new snapshot. The four in the dictionary app, uh, we create a sync and a stream for every field. And uh, we have um, on word and on translation syncs as inputs for text field and the word in it and the translation in it streams as outputs to initialize the text field. Uh, on the UI, word and translation have text editing controllers, which are initialized in init state callback. And for this, we listen to do word in it and do translation in it streams. And when new data arrives, we update corresponding controllers. These controllers are assigned to text field um, for word and for translation. And um, when the word and the, trans and the translation are changed, we add events in syncs on word and on translation. And we have already at least two streams and two syncs exposed from block. Now let's talk about validation. When we create a word with translation, we still need to validate uh, that fields are not empty and depending on it, uh, disable or enable a save button. And validation happens in business logic. To provide a life experience, uh, we can run simple validation on every user input event, uh, such as text field, checkbox, slider, etc. And we have to show a validation error as well. We can create a separate stream for every field to show errors, or we can use existing um, streams and send validation error events to them. After that, we will be looking at a dirty bit. Dirty bit is a concept when the object was changed uh, from what it was at the beginning. Block is in a much better position to keep track of this bit since it knows which uh, UI elements are mutating the data and it also has an initial data to compare to. Therefore, dirty bit belongs to business logic, to the block. The next topic is the back button. The back button is handled by scaffold. Scaffold is a widget that implements the basic material design uh, visual layout structure. And this class provides API for uh, showing drawers, snack bars, plotting action buttons, etc. To add business logic to when back button is pressed, we need to wrap the scaffold widget with wheel pop scope widget and implement a callback on wheel pop. On wheel pop must return true or false statement. If we return true, uh, then current screen will be closed. Otherwise not. One mistake uh, to make here is to trap the user and prevent them from going back. For example, if validation fails, let's see how it can happen. We can go two ways from here. One is to silently autosave when user presses the back button. And uh, another one is to show confirmation dialog. Let's consider autosave scenario. To handle autosaving, you can uh, tell block to save information by writing it to sync uh, on on will pop callback. Then you have to return false to not close the screen. In happy auto, uh, auto save scenario, block saves the data and tells to close the screen. Here is how the flow looks like in the code. The view pings the block by sending empty data over a sync stream pair and immediately cancels close action by returning false. The block tries to save the data and pings the view over another sync stream pair to close the screen. But if validation does not pass, it generates an error to show to user and user cannot close the screen. Saving to database can sometimes fail, fail as well. 
and the user is trapped in this screen. Because of the trap, user has a bad user experience. Another way is to show a confirmation dialog where the user wants to save changes. The same story with will pop scope, but block tells the view to show a confirmation dialog if data was changed. To implement this business logic, block needs at least one thing that user leaves the screen and uh, two streams, one to show confirmation dialog and uh, another one uh, to leave a screen. What about saving data? If there are no validation errors, user clicks save button and uh, view writes to sync that we want to save the entry. Block tries to save the data. If it fails, block tells you to show an error to a user. If everything goes well, can we just close the screen as we do for back button? Not necessarily. When we add an entry, we cannot just leave a screen. Probably a user wants to add more vocabulary. And for this, uh, we need an extra stream to clear input fields and uh, also to set focus uh, to the first field. And uh, another problem is that saving data can take a little bit longer. Uh, and during this time, we should uh, disable the save button and show progress indicator to make sure that uh, user doesn't uh, smash the save button hundreds of times and uh, we didn't save hundreds of the same ob objects to database. And uh, to implement this, we need one thing, save button, and about two to five streams. Show error, close screen, clean fields, uh, show progress indicator, show confirmation dialog. And let's talk about localization now. In view, we show localized buttons, hints, etc. We also need localization in block to generate localized validation messages and uh, confirmation dialogues. And uh, localization can be changed in runtime. And therefore, we need an extra sync to update localized messages about validation and errors. Let's ha count how many pipes we need to save a word in the dictionary. In generic uh, case, we have at least uh, seven on save, on pop, do pop, do show error, do show confirmation dialog, on localization changed, do show progress bar, and to save word, we need more. Why not just one dynamically typed stream? Dynamic means any time. Well, this is a viable approach that, that has different pros and cons. Pros, we don't need to dispose a lot of sync stream pairs and cons losing the benefits of statically typed language. It's easy uh, to forget to handle like a specific uh, case or to handle a type that is not, not no longer present. And uh, it feels like re-implementing a type system. Block is easy testable. Uh, no dependency on Flutter, and um, no need uh, to run uh, emulator, and it makes it easy to, to and faster to test on CI. You just need to swap the models with more complementation. And uh, Dart testing framework has uh, rich support for async tests, including streams. Uh, thank you. That's it. Uh, for my presentation today. Excellent. Thank you very much, Katrina.